Hello, and welcome to our webinar to help juniors and their parents navigate how to build a college list and how to do an effective college visitation. My name is Brenda Posnanski. I'm the Director of School Counseling and Admission here at BG, and with me today is Mr. Mullen. Please introduce yourself, and we'll just go around the Zoom. Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Mullen. I'm a school counselor here. Um, my alphabet is traditionally M or N through the end of the alphabet. I'm Mrs. Tenza. I am primarily working with the freshmen and the continued learning students or our transfer students. I'm Mrs. Futrell. I um, work with the um, students freshmen through senior year and I work with the beginning of the alphabet, um, A through about um, E and F. Hi, I'm Jill Leonard. I have the middle of the alphabet and I work with primarily freshmen and sophomore and juniors. Well, thank you. And to start off, our build, build, building a prospective uh, college list is going to be Mrs. Leonard. Yes. So before you start building your list, you want to ask yourself some questions to kind of get your thought process going on this. What you want to study in college is one thing that you want to think about like what field you want to go into like what size school do you think you want a large school with several thousand students or a very small school um, how far away from home do you want to be on the east coast or in new england or are you wanting to travel and go across the country and think of when you are thinking of maybe traveling across the country like the Things to think about are like the flights back home can be sometimes expensive. So it's something to consider when you're looking out of state across the country. Um, think of like, do you want to commute to school? Do you want to live on campus? Do you want to live in a city or do you prefer a small town? So these are kind of things to keep on your radar and kind of go with your gut instinct. Like where can you picture yourself? Cost is a big thing. Like the cost of college can be expensive. So weighing the price of all of this. Some schools may give you more financial aid than others or maybe cheaper than others. So keeping that in mind and thinking like, what is a student body like? Is the campus diverse? Do most students stay on campus or is it more, again, primarily a commuter school? Like, Which one would you prefer? One where kids stay on campus or ones where they commute? Um, do you want to do any kind of sport or activity in college? That's another thing to consider. And is there academic support? That could be a big one, especially as a freshman when you're getting your footing on a college campus, like trying to figure out what they offer for their academic services. And a lot of this information you can find like on their website. So that's often a good place to start when you are looking at schools is their website. Anything else you guys would add to that? I would just say make sure that you have thought about some of the things that Mrs. Leonard has said instead of just looking at a list of top colleges. So these top 10 you should, you know, you should apply to or these top 10 of this or top 10 of that. Make sure you go through the list of what's important to you and make sure that you have this discussion as a family because it is a family decision. So you want to make sure you have this discussion as a family so that you have parameters as to how you proceed, especially around the financial side of things, the distance, um, especially as Ms. Leonard said, if you're going across the country and you can only get home for Christmas and you won't be able to be home for Thanksgiving or a long weekend or something like that, that's something to really consider if that's, those things are important to you. So yes, I think asking yourself a lot of these questions is really important. Anybody else? All right, this is Tenza. All right, so we, the counselors have started, you know, we've been working with our rising seniors, um, talking about building a list. We tend to use a couple different websites we use SCORE as part of our search process, and we've introduced them to also Big Future and College Board. They're three great ways to kind of start looking at schools virtually. Um, so 
we try to encourage them to start big, maybe 20 schools or something, and then we help them whittle it down to about 12. Um, and we talk to them about their reach target and their likely schools. So reach schools are those colleges that really kind of admit very few students. So um, they would need a very compelling application, a strong, strong GPA, um, a really well-written essay, strong teachers, uh, uh, letters of recommendation from their teachers. Um, the REACH schools are just very competitive um, and often pricey. And, you know, a REACH school might just be a school that is far from home. Um, there's different, different reasons for a school to be a REACH school for different students. Target school is a school that really fits the academic profile. Um, your, the student's transcript really kind of mirrors that of the average student of that college. Um, so it would fit the cost that you're looking for, maybe the size of the school that you're looking for and the geographic location as well. And then likely schools are those schools that are a little bit less competitive compared to the student's academic profile. Um, you know, no matter where you decide to apply, whether it's a reach safety or a likely school, you want to make sure that it's a, a school that you'd be happy going to. So keeping in mind all of the different aspects that you're looking for. Um, again, we've been working with our rising seniors, talking to them about the importance of all of this, and um, we look forward to continuing to work with them over the summer and in the early fall when they're starting to whittle down those lists and get their applications in. And I think um, you raised some great points, Ms. Penda, about, about how to build a list. But what's really it's hard because there's over 4,000 colleges in the United States, and how do you how do you pick those top 10 schools that you want to apply to, or schools that fit these categories? Um, so any any advice by any of the other counselors about how do, how do you go about that? Like there's 4,000 colleges, where do I start? Um, I obviously asking your the questions of yourself as Mrs. Leonard suggested, but any of the other counselors have some ideas about that. I think, oh, <laughs> I think, you know, well, and I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes, but I think really thinking about what's important to you and finding what you want um, in a school. And if it's, um, you know, if it matches what you're looking for in terms of some of the questions you ask. So if it has, um, maybe if it's athletics, if it has programs that you want, if it's your the majors, um, if it fits the budget you're looking for, um, you know, if you're going on a visit, does it have that feel, um, you know, like the, the campus feel that you like, um, you know, some of those things when you're visiting um, are really going to answer some of those questions. So I think that's really an important, important part of the whole mm -hmm. process. Um, so keeping that in mind when you're doing um, some of your investigating when it comes to colleges. Um, there's also another um, tool that students can use that um, I've heard of, and I just, I, I actually used it for um, college, you know, to find colleges, and it's it's more geared towards students nowadays. It's called Loper, L-O-P-E-R, and it's a swiping app that kids can use. Um, so that seems to be one that they seem to enjoy. So I encourage my students to put that app on their phone and they can swipe right or swipe left for things that they like and don't like. Um, so it's a quicker way for students to kind of find matches for colleges. Um, but keeping things in mind like that seem to help when they're looking for schools that, um, you know, they feel like they fit in and not because of a name, but because it feels like the right place for them. And I think that's important to keep in mind that, you know, what is going to work best for them, not because of the name, but because of what feels right. And that I think that's important. Yeah, I was just going to add, you know, use the free resources that are at you that are available to you, your counselor, the websites that we have, the apps that are out there. Um, you know, a lot of times that's stuff where you can get a lot of valuable information, you know, for free. And lastly, just be realistic. You know, some of the colleges are highly competitive, so it's important that you have that honest conversation with yourself and your parents about 
you know, what is a realistic goal or what is attainable by me, you know, from a cost perspective or what Jill and Andrea were saying, what's a realistic place that I could see myself going to. And we'll talk about what to do when you're on those campuses in a couple of minutes. But, uh, you know, there's, you want to make sure you go and look at schools because you never know where you're going to end up is not, not always where you start. On that note, we'll talk about visiting colleges. So when you're visiting colleges, um, you want to, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, the one that is preferred is actually to go visit a college campus. Um, but sometimes that's not always um, easy to do because maybe the college is on the West Coast. Um, so there are virtual tours as well. And those virtual tours have become um, very you know, popular because um, with COVID, they've really expanded those um, because students couldn't go visit school. So you can do virtual tours now, but we really like in-person tours because you get a better feel for a campus. So if you can um, visit in person, um, it, you get a feel for what the school is like. Um, I highly recommend going when there are students on campus. So if you haven't scheduled them, try to go during break or, um, you know, when there are students um, there. So, you know, if you can't go during the April break, go when we have days off or, you know, um, you know, if during when we have the um, national testing day, that's another day that students usually go. But anytime there are students on campus, that gives you a feel for when, you know, it's full of life. If you go during the summer, you're not going to have that same experience. But if you like a campus when you go during this, the summer, try to go again. Um, sometimes if it's rainy or cold, you know, if you weren't sure about a campus, that's another time you want to make sure that you go back. Um, just because you get a different experience. So you really want to make sure you visit a campus. If you can't get to a campus and you're doing a virtual tour, um, there are accepted student days. So if you are accepted to a campus, let's say on the West Coast, um, you can always go to a school after the fact and visit then. Um, that's another way to see the, the campus um, and get to experience the students that you will be going to school with. So if it's a school that you potentially will go to, that would be a way to see the campus and the students that are there. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get to those campuses because it requires, you know, a plane ride and getting over there. Again, you'll see what it's like if you have to take your, you know, a plane ride and then how do you get all your stuff there and how does that work? So um, it's good to have that experience if you're looking at, at colleges that aren't close to home. Um, there are also open houses. So if you do an open house event at a school, um, you have to keep in mind when you go there, there are going to be a number of students there. So it won't be as, um, you know, it's not going to be as personal as if you go on a campus tour. When you set it up using the, the college website, it's going to be a number of people um, and they're going to be, you know, the campus will be beautiful. They'll have it all prepped. It's going to be the best food. So when you go during the open house, while it's a beautiful experience, they're going to have the best of the best. So great experience if you go for the open house visits, but there'll be more people. So you may not get um, the personal attention that you would if you go on a one-on-one -on -one or you know a smaller tour, um, but still a great experience to see what the campus is like. You get to see, um, you know, maybe get a taste of the food when you're there. You get to hear more about the programs that they offer, um, but also another way to see what you can, you know, experience as you're there um, at the campus or on the campus. So you want to definitely see what the schools are like. Um, and being there on campus, you get to see the life of the campus, what it's like. You get to ask questions. You get to visit um, and maybe see a game or see a play or, you know, experience what the town is like so it's really great to have that experience and it that's where I think you get that feel of is this a place I see myself um and so that when we say you know is this some place you would want to be um that's what we mean by that and having that experience is something you know that you'll only know if you get to visit that school so um that's what we want your experience when you're going on these tours and visits um and ask questions you know as a student we really want the students to you know make a list of questions and ask those questions you know what is it like you know what do you do on the weekend does everyone stay here do they go home that's you know what we usually call a, a suitcase campus so you know people go home for the weekend um, make a list before you go there and feel free to ask the tour guide, you know, what about this or, you know, what are the activities that they do? Um, feel free to ask those questions because this is where you're going to spend your time for the next four years. Um, and so you want to know more about the school. 
Mr. Mullen's going to ask or answer a few questions about um, things that you can ask when you're there. Yeah, just to follow up to what Lisa was saying, you know, the tour guides, much like when you shadow here, you know a good amount about the school, but if there's something that you feel they didn't answer, you can certainly ask to speak with somebody from a specific department or whatnot, because you have to think of it big picture. It's the school's job to try and sell you on why you should apply to their school. So that, you know, they're going to do whatever they can to properly inform you on everything you need to know or want to know about their specific campus or academic program within the campus. And one other thing that I always like to joke about with the students is you need to make sure you try the food. You know, if the students remember when they shadowed BG, one big thing they do is they get to eat in the calf. Well, you know, multiply that by 14 to 21 meals a week. And that's what students are going to be experiencing when they're in college. So you want to make sure that the food is tolerable. You know, we can't guarantee it'll be good, but you want to make sure it's something you can eat two to three times a day so that, um, you know, you're not starving when you're there. Uh, ask to see dorms. You know, most of the time they take you to like a mock dorm room or something like that. But, you know, ask the tour guide if you can see their room, you know, or something like that. So you can get a better sense of what a typical college dorm is like versus the one they've staged to make look absolutely perfect, you know, which I highly doubt most college dorm rooms are in, having lived in them. Uh, you know, don't be shy about asking questions. You know, there's nearly no bad question to ask. And again, if the tour guide can't answer it, you can certainly go see someone else in the admissions office, the registrar's office, the financial aid office to ask him or her the specific question you've got, and they'll hopefully be able to answer it, or they'll at least point you in the right direction so you can get a better sense of, is this the place I maybe want to apply and potentially attend four years from now? Um, you know, and lastly, make sure you get out of the car. It's, you know, we always joke about Riviere being down the road and people say, oh, well, you know, that's right down the road. But how many students have actually stepped foot on that campus and realized that it's an actually a very nice uh, campus with a lot to offer? It just happens to be, you know, less than a mile from the high school you go to. But depending on the student, there's a specific major there or whatnot that could be appealing to you. So make sure you go on a campus tour. Like Lisa was saying, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to go do that, but physically going on a tour when uh, available is certainly something we encourage students to do because you're going to be living there for nine months out of the next 12 months when you're in college. So we want to make sure you get a good sense of you being there, you know, and one thing, one last thing too, if you're an athlete, you know, and you go to that school, ask yourself this question, could I see myself staying here if I get hurt and, or I decide to quit? You know, one question I always ask the students that I work with on the baseball side are, you know, are you sure you're making the right decision? And if you get hurt or you decide that baseball is not for me, can you see yourself staying there for nine months, not doing the thing you previously loved doing? And, you know, it causes them to kind of look a little bit inward and reflect on that. But it's a good question to ask when making what up until this point is going to be the biggest decision of their lives. And then switching to uh, one of the more important things we talked about, I just wanted to talk about the class counseling pages that every class has. So for the class of 2024, you can find that under the My Classes tab on My BG, and it's the counseling class of 2024, not to be confused with the class of 24, which is, I believe, the bigger picture one. This one is the one that the students, I'm sorry, that the counseling staff runs specifically geared for the junior class. So what we put on it is a lot of scholarship information, information regarding deadlines, virtual tours, in-person tours, standardized testing, basically anything we think is relevant to your class, we'll start uploading and adjusting it as it comes in. So there's not much on there as far as deadlines right now, but once you start senior year, we get a lot of information throughout the course of the school year that we put on there, specifically regarding tours and scholarships, and think financial aid information that is really, really relevant to you as future college students. So you can take advantage of that. And we plead with the students every year to really take a look at it because there's probably thousands of dollars in free scholarships that goes unclaimed. There's free applications that go unused. And there's a lot of information that we put out there for your benefit that just doesn't get fully taken advantage of no matter how much we say. So hopefully it's something that you can look at every single day or when you have the time to see what's on there because it's ever changing and always improving. So when you have a minute, take a look at it next year and just make sure you're looking at all the information that's on there because some of it may be really useful to a good majority of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone.
Another thing that we, we want to share is that we just had a college fair on April 5th, and we do want to say how proud we were of our juniors, um, the class of 2024. They really used the fair effectively. They asked a lot of questions. The representatives were very pleased with how they worked through the fair, and they, they were very appropriate, polite. They seemed informed. And so we want to just say and compliment the kids on how well they did at the college fair. Um, so the other thing is, um, as the counselors were mentioning different sources, a great source also is the college website itself. You can register for, for tours on the college website. Students can really dig into what kind of majors the college will offer offers, um, as well as sort of clubs, organizations, living situations, all of that can be found on the college website. And it's really important for the students to get accustomed to using the college website because that's where the application information is. Also, the statistics and the criteria to get into the college. And they post that information, and they're not kidding when they put that information up there, that that's important information for students, and it will help when building a list. So it's really important that students start really looking at some of these resources that have been mentioned throughout this webinar. We are hoping to do another webinar very soon, and the next webinar will be um, around teacher recommendations and what colleges are looking for. So be on the lookout for that. We will put this out in the push page, and we will also have it sitting on the website for an, if you want to look at this at any time over the summer. So we want to thank you very much. Thank you, counselors, for your words of wisdom. And tell your son or daughter and students, don't forget, come visit your counselor often. Um, you really want to get to know um, the, your counselor and use them as a resource. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.